Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen, and the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Jack Lemmon, Mel Brooks, and Tony Bennett. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny! Of you, I agree. I, I feel like Ross Perot. You love me and I haven't said a damn thing. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Well, I'll tell you. Here we are, guys. Here we are. Is this really our last week or did the governor call yet? <laughs> Boy, you're, well, you're in a grand mood, and uh, it's so festive on the line out front, it looks like the Daryl Gates going away party. <laughs> oh. I, thank I thank you for waiting out there. It's really very nice of them. We were very flattered. I looked out, saw the line out there today, and I saw Domino's delivering pizza. I thought, <laughs> turned about the GE was catering. <laughs> they got to pick up a buck even though out in the streets. Ah, uh, some people have been on the line since two this morning. Yeah. And I want to call... <laughs> Tommy, you didn't have to be out there. You can come on in. <laughs> Tom doesn't understand. He was out there with a blanket and a canteen last night. <laughs> anyway, I want to point out, don't forget after I leave, these plants over here have to be watered once a week. And, <laughs> And I left the number of the, the cable man on the desk. <laughs> now, have you ever seen such a hype of publicity and articles about this? I mean, good heavens. Nice, but almost a little overkill. Uh, well, that's, it's nice, but I'll tell you. Something, it's, it's, something strange is happening. Two members of my staff today described me to a journalist as warm and approachable. What happened to cold? Uh... I tuned in 60 Minutes the other night, which I hadn't seen for a while, and all of a sudden I see myself on the screen, an interview that I did with Mike Wallace 14 years ago. I can't figure it out. Mike Wallace keeps getting older, the hair keeps getting younger. Well, enough of that. what do we talk about? There's not a hell of a lot going on politically. Uh, today is the... Uh, the Oregon primary. You're from, you're from Oregon, right? Right. Oregon? Oregon. Did I pronounce it wrong? Yes. You always say... It's Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. right. That's the primary today. Jerry Brown is in trouble up there. Today, a spotted owl walked up, uh, walked up to him and took his picture. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> it was such a good joke, and I butchered it. I, and took picture with Tom Brown. Owl, boom, Oregon. Now, the strange thing is, politically, Perot is leading Bush and Clinton in some states, although he has no positions. And Bush said, that's not fair. I have four positions on every issue. <laughs> now, now, yeah, yeah. Reading the paper today, there were two side-by-side -side headlines. One said, NBC announces its fall schedule. The other one was the FDA okays the use of Halcyon. Isn't, isn't, isn't that redundant? Uh, 
Now, to ensure their rating success, NBC is going to start every new series with a farewell episode. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, NBC will do anything for ratings. Tonight, in a special farewell episode, Tequila Marries Bonetti. <laughs> See, nobody even knows that show. <laughs> Wasn't that about a detective and his dog? Yes. How many of you ever seen that show called Tequila and Bonetti? All right, there's Tequila and there's Bonetti over there. <laughs> What else is going on? This should interest you. This is just one of those things that, that I don't know that lends itself to humor, but did you realize the temperature in the world is going to be one degree cooler than usual for the next two years? Do you know why that is? They say because of the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. The ashes were thrust up into the air. They blocked the sun, reflects the sunlight back into space. So it's going to be a degree or two cooler for the next couple of years. I thought you would notice that your ice cubes are getting larger. <laughs> I had to, I had to go to... I had to go to a volcano to get that joke. I went in the volcano. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, pro <laughs> prosecutors are now trying to find out what Casper Weinberger, trying to find out from Casper Weinberger, what Reagan knew about Iran-Contra. Fascinating. Even Reagan didn't know what Reagan knew about Iran Contra. <laughs> All right. We have an unusual booking on tonight's show. We have two of the guests who were on our very first show, October 1st, 1962, from Studio 6B in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Unusual. And both. And both of them have been on this show in the four decades we've been on. They've been on the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. I don't know how many of those people are, but Mr. Mel Brooks and Tony Bennett are here. Yeah. One of the truly... And one of the truly fine actors in the world, Mr. Jack Lemmon, is here. We're back tonight. We have uh, Mel Brooks and Tony Bennett from the early years, Mr. Jack Lemmon. Speaking of the early years, somebody ran a lot of statistics the other day. Statistics are mainly pretty boring, so let me bore you with a couple. <laughs> we'll have aired something about around 5,000 shows have been aired, Whoa. which works out to about, somebody figured out, 100,000 commercials. Uh, is that possible? Yes. Is that possible? <laughs> Because I used to do a lot of them. With them. I've fed 10,000 hungry Alpo puppies. And 10,000 Mrs. McMahon. Oh. No, 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 no. You're no. right there with me, pal. Yeah, you got that. <laughs> no, look, if we didn't have the sponsor, we have no show. We're grateful. But occasionally, you bite the hand that feeds you. And... Uh, there have been a lot of commercials on over the year. They got very, very tiresome. So when they did, we would take them and do a little parody of them. So we're going to show you tonight from our comedy vault, which is just about empty. <laughs> <laughs> we're, get, we're getting out just in time. <laughs> Nothing left on the shelf. We were scrambling today to say, what have we got left? We ain't showing. <laughs> so <laughs> here are some... Here are some little commercial blackouts that we have done over the years. I don't know the dates on these, but it probably doesn't make any difference either. So watch the monitor if you want to. Here they are, folks. <laughs> now we have two bowls here. One bowl contains mashed potatoes that you prepared yourself. And this other bowl is a nice hot bowl of stuffing, which we call range top stuffing. Now, which one do you think your husband would prefer? Well, that's easy. He'll prefer my mashed potatoes. He loves them. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Freeman? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Freeman, will you taste this, please? Ah, oh, sure. Uh -huh. Now, will you try that? Uh-huh. 
Now, which do you find the better tasting? Well, that's easy. I, I like this one. Well, that's our range top stuffing. Can you honestly say that you prefer it over your wife's potatoes? Ah, uh, very definitely. Range top is delicious. Well, you want the stuffing, huh? <laughs> Hi, honey, I left the office early. And have I got a surprise for you. I brought the colonel home. I've got a surprise for you. So did I. <laughs> honey, I left our traveler's checks on top of my locker. Oh, no. No problem. Oh, honey, this is Mr. Ito. Please. Don't get up. Citizen Corp office right next door. Uh, but these weren't Citizen Corp traveler's checks. Oh, so sorry that I can't help you. What will we do? <laughs> what will they do? For years, women have waited for their men to come home from the sea. They remember their men and the hearty, nautical fragrance of their cologne. <laughs> For men who've been at sea a little too long. Hi, I'm Johnny Dugan. You might remember. <laughs> a well-known prize fighter in this. I had a wife and everything was going really well until I contracted my tragic ailment, Slim Whitman's disease. Thanks to Yorville Hills Hospital, I am now able to lead a useful and productive There is hope. Contact Yodel Hills Hospital when someone you love talks real silly. Thank you very much. My pantyhose make me look like I'm not wearing nothing. My pantyhose make me look like I'm not wearing nothing. Now, hold it, you little teasers. Now, come on. <laughs> Admit it, you're really wearing something, aren't you? <laughs> yes, we are. Well, I'm not. Personally, I've always preferred the esoteric type comedy, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, it's wonderful. A little social message there, some redeeming value. <laughs> and if you find out what it is, will you please let us know? <laughs> we'll be back with Mel Brooks in just a moment. And Tony Bennett. And Jack Lennon. As I mentioned earlier, Mel Brooks was one of our first guests on our first show. The other guests that particular night were Joan Crawford, Groucho Marx, and Rudy Valley, along with Tony, who will be out shortly. Then I think Mel had, uh, the, the album, The 2,000-Year-Old Man, had not been out too long. Anyway, Mel Brooks has gone on to bigger things as a writer, producer, star, uh, kumquat, uh, <laughs> ashtray, shoehorn, many things. Would you welcome Mr. Mel Brooks? Well, here we are. Wow. Just Six like yesterday. Yeah, I was the last guest. Were you? On that show, and I'm the first guest on it. I've moved forward. <laughs> I've moved ahead. Five spots up the couch. Yes. Do you remember the first show of, of, at all? Some of it's just kind of a haze to me. I remember the... Groucho, you know, did the first 15 minutes that Yes, night. yes. I remember Joan Crawford came on with a wire hanger. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no. It was, it was a... I'm, a, I'm only kidding. Of course you are. That's yeah. what you get paid for. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, this is, this is really, it's very touching. It's very moving. It's very emotional. A week from now, somebody's going to be saying, where's Johnny? <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, just... give me those pictures. I'm going to show you this. Somebody dug these out today. I'm going to show you first. I'm going to show them to the audience. 
These are from the actual first show. Ah. Black and white pictures. All the kinnies and the, and the tapes of those early shows are gone, like the first 10 years. But the first, yeah, that's true. The tapes are all gone. But here you are sitting at the desk with Joan Crawford. Look, look at the monitor, you can see it better. There is a younger Mel Brooks <laughs> and a younger Johnny Carson and a, and a live Joan Crawford. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it that way. Oh, I, hey, folks. Hey, I had nothing to do with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you were doing here. What were you? What the hell were you doing here? I was probably doing my impression of Tony Bennett, who came on from the first uh, from the first show. Look at our hair got all white. Isn't what it? happened to us? I don't know. What happened? I, I don't know. I had a Danish and a cup of coffee, and I'm suddenly 65. <laughs> what the hell happened? To us? Dorian Gray, right? <laughs> the king lives. Why didn't you wait for me? Oh, Why didn't you wait for the king is dead? Yeah. Long live yeah. the king. I'm sorry. I think I got Ed's uh, drink. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Hey, I, was, I was talking about two thousand year old. The man. king lives. How, how did that used to go? Remember what do you mean? You were just, you were just taking yes. a drink. Yes. And they say. I was. Yes. The king is dead. Long live the king. The king lives. <laughs> the king lives. Oh, that was. The king a, is still alive. That's the king right. Is still alive. That's Not right. yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, those were the good old days. I'm, I, I just had to get it straight. Just had to get right. it straight. Okay. Two thousand year old man. Do you ever do that anymore? Yeah, at parties and things. By the way, Rhino Records. Loves it so much, they're going to reissue those things on CDs. And... I remember going to parties when you and yeah. Carl... I remember the live parties when you and Carl would sit around, and he would just start throwing anything, like, uh, what did you do for recreation as a 2000, when you were 2,000 years old? I said golf. We played golf. Played golf? 2,000 years ago? Many, many thousands of years ago was the, was, was the, 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 the matrix, the beginning of golf. I didn't know it that. It started very naturally, a skunk... A skunk. Would come by the mouth of your cave. Mm -hmm. You'd take a stick, you'd say, get the hell out of here. <laughs> he, it would travel a while. That's you right. Know? Go by somebody else. He'd say, get the hell out of here. So there were no Probably. golf balls. But it fell course. in a hole, and everybody was happy. That's that right. Was golf. I see. It started that way. Sure, that's how it I just made that up. Now. Did you have, Did you have any children? I had over forty-two thousand. Forty-two thousand children. children. Yes. And not one comes to visit me. <laughs> Say, you do remember. Yeah. I do remember. Oh, man. Uh, where'd, you, where'd you grow up? New York. I grew up in New York. I grew up in Williamsburg. Yeah. Williamsburg. Yeah. Williamsburg, yeah. Williamsburg is actually a section of Brooklyn, just where the Williamsburg Bridge yeah. enters Brooklyn. It's the only thing that's not afraid to enter Brooklyn. <laughs> anyway. Was it, was it a tough neighborhood? Yeah, then? it was very tough. It was very tough. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it was so tough. We used to go to the Woolworths. To steal, naturally, nobody had money. Yeah. You know? So we go, we go to the Woolworths, and there was this guy, a little Filipino guy that was demonstrating yo-yos. And he'd say, he'd say, now we going to walk at the dog. <clears throat> and he'd do it, and he'd walk the yo-yos. You know? And he'd come and he'd say, now we walk at the dog back. Huh? And he'd walk at the dog. Right? While he was walking the dog, we were stealing yo-yos. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One day, unbeknownst to me, but known to the manager of the store, <laughs> I was, I copped a little toy pistol, this, uh -huh. this big little thing, and I put it in here, I started to go out the door, and he said, hey, and I pulled out the, I said, get back, I'll blow your head off. <laughs> and he jumped back, and I ran away, I still got the gun. <laughs> it was you know, I actually stole something from Woolworths also when I was a kid. Most embarrassing, it was a little ring. You know, I could want to... And I put it, and the manager came over and said, would you give me the ring? I said, I didn't take anything. He says, let's go to your father's office. Oh. I live in a small town. And he started to walk me over. And I, well, I, I did the first known case of plea bargaining, I think. <laughs> I said, I gave it to him at Pride, and he says, all right, but isn't that awful? Oh, it's awful. I snuck into a movie house with my friend Benji, and they said to us, look, do you want, you want a beating, or should we tell your mother? I said, tell my mother. <laughs> Benji said, I'll take the beating. <laughs> he was a fool, you know? Did you, uh, you used to work in the Catskills. Oh, yeah, Up the in mountains. Upstate New York, the mountains. The Borscht Belt. Yeah. Uh, nothing like it. A lot of the it, great comedians, comics started there. It was a great phenomenon. I, I, um, I was a drummer. I know. On, on Saturday afternoons, Buddy Rich took uh, an hour out of his life and would, sit down would and... teach me how to play. 
And it, it happened because Mickey Rich was his brother in the alto, right. wonderful alto sax player. And Mickey was a friend of mine, I went to Lincoln High School, and I went back to the house, and there was this drum set, and I went boom, boom, boom. And at the door, I heard stinks. I turned around, there was Buddy. Uh -huh. He said, but I want you here at 11 o'clock every time he taught me for about six or seven months. He took an yeah. hour out of his Saturdays, you know, when he wasn't on the road. He was, he was, he was the greatest Couple guy. Couple with Buddy ever teaching, he never read music. And he would just say, here's the way you do, how do you do that? Well, you yeah, do it this right, way. Right, 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 he'd show you. He couldn't, couldn't tell you. And then when he saw Blazing Saddles, I, I finally made it. You know, I made this remarkable hit, Blazing Saddles. Saddles. It was a big hit. And I ran, I ran into Buddy at a favorite Italian restaurant. We used to go to New York, uh, Patsy's. Right. And he came up to me with tears in his eyes, and he said, gee, it's such a big hit. And you could have been a good drummer, Mel. <laughs> That killed him, huh? And he meant it. He meant oh, it. He meant great. it. But working, we work, to, yeah. Do we have to leave for a second? Yeah. Oh, we're up for this. Well, we're coming okay. back. So here we are, folks. Yeah. Yeah.